This is DDS. From the DDS studios, we are your hosts, Blake Nelson, Bradley Newberry, and coming to us from the man cave, you know him, you love him, it's Matthew too. Tone Blue Parker. Parker, how you doing, buddy? I am fantastic, and I am ready for the best Saturday of the year. Yeah, we, uh, look, there have been some stinkers along the way. Absolutely, there are every single year, but this week, not just Saturday, but Sunday, there's some good games going on. We really love it. Newberry, we're also going to talk about some stuff uh, in the NFL right now. Uh, that, no. I mean, can, can you even... NFL, you're getting soft in some ways. You act like you're cracking down in other ways but we're going to talk about roughing the passer today on this yep. podcast yep absolutely but while we got your attention guys go ahead down below hit that like and subscribe button for us it's free it's easy doesn't cost you a daggum thing go ahead and like us on all of our social media at dds sports talk on twitter instagram facebook and tiktok and you can download the audio versions of all these podcasts on your favorite podcasting platform newberry it's not very often that we have a situation where the roughed gets fined yes. as opposed to the rougher. The one that gets tackled, thrown to the ground, has been fined by the NFL $11,139 for a little kick. Kicking Grady Jarrett after he was roughed to the I, mighty turf. I, I, you know, I may be confused. I may have missed it, but I didn't see a flag for that. I didn't see. Uh, was it a, a toe, replay was it for a the kick? Touch? I don't know. I don't know, man. But but the the real question is, Parker, can you even touch an NFL quarterback now without being penalized? One Brady does that stuff all the time. If you watch it, I can, and the only reason he finally got fined for it was because of the outcry about the terrible play call. And I'm going to go with a, a little bit different than how most people are talking about this, guys. I actually think that roughing the passer is 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 less of a problem than it's ever been. I just think that we've had three bad calls because there was one with Brady. There was that one with Carr, and there was another, maybe even the worst of all of them with uh, Jacoby Brissett. Go look at that one. Just three horrible, horrible calls all at once brought this to the forefront. So do you think that it's really all three of those? Or do you think if the fact that Tom Brady had it happen to him and the way that it happened where he literally basically talked Jerome Boger into it, if that doesn't happen, is this even a story? No, oh, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, it, it, Tom Brady makes it a bigger story. It's a story, but Tom yeah. Brady makes it a bigger story. You know, there's there's a, a conspiracy theory out there that oh, it's Brady, it's Bra it's, it's 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 they want to lock down on Brady. Well, I, I got some stuff that shows a little bit different. Over the last four years, two of those years, you know, I me mean, how many passing uh, roughing the passer calls Tom Brady had against him? Zero, none. Last year, he attempted over seven hundred passes. Guess how many he had? One. In his career, Tom Brady has had 61 roughing the passer calls against him. The opposing quarterback, 71. Mm. It's because he gets the ball out. He doesn't want to get hit at all. <laughs> well, I mean, what we're talking about here is Tom Brady, we think, gets special treatment a lot of times because he is the GOAT. But Michael Jordan did too, right? As You know what, though? Maybe they should. Era. Right. I mean, all yeah, right. for sure. Could he have earned it? Yeah, maybe he's earned that right. Maybe he has guys down in the chat. Tell us what you think about Tom Brady. Is Tom Brady does he deserve to be able to get did, these sweet did, calls? Did Peyton Manning? Did Brett Favre? The, the the argument that Tom Brady got special treatment to me is that one was clear as freaking day to see. There wasn't anybody in the sight lines. Like the one against Carr was a bad angle. I could see from where the ref was where the, where you you think he lands on him right like. That was one that's potentially okay. I just I saw something that wasn't there. The Brady one, that was just I mean that was wide open. He just absolutely blew that call or gave him some you know a little love, <laughs> a little love. I, I don't think that Jeffrey Simmons gave any love to Carson Wentz when oh he gave him the left gosh. hand. Hook. Jesus. This guy over here, Jeez. he's like, oh, he punched him in his head. Find the video. Let's oh, show like, the people. God, yeah, yeah let's. Some, there were I, expletives. I, out there flying in the text. Thread. It was a foul. Penalty. <laughs> it was a foul, but there was not one committed. <laughs> that is true. I mean, Bradley got glasses on, so you know, maybe it's time to get those updated. Yep. But <laughs> the three pack from Costco, maybe. My oh, issue is just boy. how bad some of these refs are. So the guy that threw the in the Chiefs game was uh Carl Cheffers, Ch Chief or Cheff, however you say his mm -hmm. name. 
Sheffers. Sheffers, thank you. Last year, there was one in the Chiefs Bills game. It was the same guy. <laughs> it's the same ref. Like, I, the, also the the guy that he's also the guy that I just that threw the uh, the the penalty on the defensive holding on the kick uh, on the field goal against the Raiders. He's the same ref that did it in 2015 against the Raiders. So there's just a certain refs that are so bad. Him, Bogert's another one. Uh, that just need to be addressed. You, right? I mean, do, do they need to have some sort of accountability for some of these refs? Because Boger is notorious. My understanding is that they get graded, right? And then they earn the but right to do mean? postseason Super Bowl. So they, they get graded after every game. Uh, you're right. If they do get graded after every game. And hey, to, to throw it back, to give them a little credit, last night in the uh, the game, the, the Washington-Chicago uh, game, that play to Mooney on the goal line, I first saw it, and I'm like, touchdown, touchdown, right? They show it in replay, and they call it, you know, incomplete pass. I'm like, no way. I'm like, it's at least complete. Did he get it Get it in? And then they show it. I'm like, holy crap. To get that in real time was unbelievable. So they do make some good stuff, but these roughing the passer ones, they just, especially on third down, are brutal. Why can't they review those like they do in college? This isn't college, which makes it better in my mind. Is it is it better that they didn't get it right? This is a better product. I'm not talking about the product as a whole. I'm talking about this specific thing. I think they could do it better. There's an argument out there, and some coaches say, why can't we review everything? Why can't you review every single thing? And the argument against it is, well, the games would take forever. But that's not true because you would lose your challenges. So it – I was listening to a referee actually today, a former referee had been in the year for nine, been in the league for 19 years. And he said that he, that his argument about not being able to, to review these was remember a couple of years ago when they enacted reviewing defensive pass interference calls, like remember the debacle that was. So let's not bring in more human element to this. I think in college it's, it's only reviewed for targeting it's it's person, the, the, for personal the, fouls. The, I mean, the it, penalty still stands as called, but then they review it if it's really targeting. Is that right? They don't take away the penalty. They still well, have to. Well, it depends on how they call it. I can't remember exactly the, what the wording is, but if they call it, it's, it's what happened in the Texas game. It was because of the way that they called it, they could not review whatever it was, like the, the roughing the passer or the incomplete pass or something like that. Uh, it, but anyways, we're getting in the weeds. Rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah so, down the rabbit hole. so the question then is, <clears throat> do we not like the thought of roughing the passer or do we just not like the officials, the officiating? I think that it's exactly what Parker said. I think that it's just we had a we have a cluster that happened right here all together. It's fresh on everybody's mind. One of them was Tom Brady, and it appeared that he talked his way into it. And we have, and, and it was with a, with some referees that have a history of being, you know, making bad calls. So, and I think that all com combined provides the context that, you know, it's got everybody talking. Even in the post game comments, Tom Brady made it sound like it was a bad call. Tom Brady himself, you know, just kind of snickered about it. It, it but that that's it. it. They're both on third down. They're on third down. They're marquee games, and they're involving the most popular player in the history of the NFL. Hmm. I like the segue. He says marquee games and boy, we are loaded today on both our college pick six and our NFL picks. We're going to go right to college. Let's do the college pick six. We are beginning in Rocky top. Go back and check out yeah. a little pod that we did a little orange out pod. Yep. We're not going to we'll, give you we'll all a, the we'll notes put a, here. We'll put a, a tag up here in the corner. Where is it? It'd be over over here, wherever it is. Yeah, we're it's up gonna, in the corner there. We're just going to do some quick thoughts and some picks tonight, but if you want to hear some breakdown, go back to the Orange Out pod. We've got Bama minus seven at the UT Vols. Alabama has won 15 straight times, but Parker, let me know what you're thinking right here. As you said, if you want a super detailed uh, breakdown, and it is very detailed, go back and listen to our show Wednesday. But just a quick little you know, 30,000 foot view. This game comes down to two things. Give Hendon Hooker time to pass. Because if they survive the Alabama defensive line, I don't care what the stats, I don't care what the TV people say, 
This Alabama secondary is vulnerable. They yep. just they give up too many yards to too many bad quarterbacks. They don't have an interception on the year. And the second one, get off the field and third down. Last year, Alabama converted 15 of 20 third down conversions. It needs to be more like 30% and not 75%. Yep, yeah, I uh, I think those are really good keys to the game. You got to get off the field. I think they have to take some chances with some blitz packages on defense on third down in particular. Uh, I think the offensive line is key in this game. I think the defensive line as well. They got to get to the quarterback. Uh, is Bryce Young going to play? I don't know. Uh, this the way this line is moving. It would make you look like maybe he is going to play, but I don't. I don't put any stock in that at all. Um, I don't know. I, I think that the Vols have a lot of weapons here. Uh, I don't think that Alabama has had to defend a receiving core like this all year. They're an undisciplined Nick Saban team, relatively, and that's why I'm going for the Vols here to to cover this. You're gonna go cover? Or I mean, win? sorry. Sorry, they're winning. They're going to win. They're going to win the game straight up? Yeah. I think this is going to be a 42-38 game. I've got highlighted uh, running back slash wide receiver slash slash (laughs) Jameer Gibbs, both running and receiving out of the backfield. Quick passing game. We talked about in our orange out pod. Some things amiss with the Alabama wide receivers, but if they can get Jameer Gibbs going, keep him healthy this game, he will be the weapon no matter who the quarterback is. My key player to the game is on defense, Will Anderson Jr. 10 tackles for loss, five sacks. Henry Toa Toa back in Knoxville this week. I'm sure he'll be met with a warm reception by the UT Vol fans. He leads the team with 39 tackles. My favorite thing about football is defense, and I don't trust the Vols defense ranked 87th in the nation to stop anything much. The Bama's defense maybe gets one or two opportunistic stops. Alabama, man, they... Man, he is dragging. Yeah. He is dragging this, his feet here. This, he wants to do it. This guys. is this is it. This is it. Since 2007, Alabama has only won by one score twice. They will not win by one score this week. They will win 33 to 24. Look out, Rocky this, Top. And they will cover the spread. Look out, Rocky Top. What's Parker got? Gentlemen. Indulge me for just a moment because Bama is going for win 16 in a row. And 16 is a very important number for our beautiful home state of Tennessee. And we need to defend it. Coaches poll, Alabama's number one. AP, balls are number six, 16. The last time Tennessee won this game, they scored 16 points. The 16th time these two teams ever faced off was 90 years ago to the day tomorrow. We are the 16th state to enter the union. We're also the 16th most populated state. Andrew Johnson followed the 16th president. Francis King Louis, the 16th, and this is true, visited Knoxville in 1797. Javon Kirst was selected 16th. The Music City Miracle happened with 16 seconds left to go on the, on the, on the clock. The Lady Vols soccer team is currently ranked 16th. To call someone in a large portion of our great state, you have to start with, guess what? A one and a six. The 16th governor of Tennessee established Cumberland University in Lebanon, who once beat Alabama. In 2016, the great, great Pat Summit passed away at, guess what? 16 backwards, 61. Dolly has an album called Her 16 Biggest Hits. In 1916, the first ever modern-day supermarket, Piggly Wiggly, was opened in the Volunteer State. Rocky Top was recorded on the 16th. Number 16, the great Peyton Manning will be at college game day, so let's not let this Bama have a sweet 16 and send them back home on Route 16 from the hell from which they came. UT wins the game straight up. Woo! My God. 
Uh, I've got the arthritis now from pushing that button so many damn times. Goodness gracious me, Parker. I've got a feeling we're going to see Parker on TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) All right, what do we got next now? Next, we're going to the swamp. It seems like they're playing every week in the Florida swamp. Yep. LSU at Florida Gators. The Gators are a a two-and-a-half-point favorite since... Both teams are coming in at four and two. It feels like this is a game of disappointing teams here. This four and two doesn't feel positive for either team. Yeah, I think this is a game where it's going to kind of, it might determine the rest of one of these teams' seasons. Really might. You know, I'm looking at Florida. I think Anthony Richardson is broken. I think he is a broken quarterback. He has no confidence in himself. I don't know what the coaching staff has done or isn't doing that that's not jiving with him. But I think that, uh, you know, Tennessee gave the, the LSU quarterback a little bit of a get right game. Cause I mean, he threw for quite a few yards. Uh, they just couldn't hang with him uh, offensively, but um, yeah, I'm going LSU in this game. It, Parker, it appears the LSU's run defense is gone and that's what Florida wants to do. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, well, Anthony Richardson, kind of like what Blake was saying, will he show up to be able to do that? I'm I'm off of him. I, I just can't do it anymore. Remember when he was rumored to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft? Yeah. I mean, last mock I saw, I looked this up, he was going 62nd overall. This is a huge game for two new co- two new coaches. Mm-hmm. And it could it could make a difference in the recruiting trail. They're both gonna have a lot of recruits there. Um, kind of like Blake was hinting at. I think the loser of this team of uh, this game might end up only winning one or two more for the mm-hmm. rest of of the year. I mean, it's just going to put them in a big time disadvantage and, you know, LSU's offense, you talked about um, Florida's wanting to run the ball, but that's what LSU wants to do. They didn't match up well against Tennessee and they, they do with Florida, Florida's defense will give up yards on the ground. And much like Florida, that is what LSU wants to do. Yep. I mentioned LSU's run defense is gone. The Florida Gators own the worst SEC defense on third down. Mm. I mean, that's they, weird. They were consistently giving up third and 12, third and 15, third and 30. It didn't matter if it was third down. It seemed like Missouri was picking it up. Missouri. Missouri. It was just opportunis- opportunistic picks, interceptions, turnovers. It's like the bend don't break thing, but they're bending an awful lot there in Gainesville. The Gators will want to run with Montrell Johnson, Trevor, ETN, Naquan Wright, and, of course, the quarterback, Richardson. I think it's just enough. I'm going Florida 27-21 and covers the spread. Can Florida get to the quarterback? That's a big-time question. The LSU offensive line stinks at protecting them. They're bottom 10 in the country at allowing sacks. To be fair, it is because of a lot of injur- in- injuries, but give me LSU. And as I said before the season, Florida can only win a game if Anthony Richardson goes off. Do you say LSU? Yes, LSU. Right. Yes. I was writing it down. Guys, Tennessee, Florida games. Tell us what you think down in the comments. Tell me what you think. Would you go? I went. L- for, I went LSU. You and L- all right. Golly, I'm yeah. by myself on both games so far. Yeah. All right. Next this is going great for you. I guess so. Uh, we're going <laughs> to the B one G. We have number ten Penn State at number five Michigan. If you want the home team, you have to give seven full points. The Big Ten East is up for grabs. Penn State coming off the bye. Parker can Sean Clifford. Be consistent enough here not to give it away, give it away now. Uh, maybe. I, I don't really know. Both these teams haven't really played anybody. If you're just looking at the stats, obviously Michigan's going to pl- be the play. But their schedule so far, Colorado State, Hawaii, who Vandy beat by 60, by the way, UConn, Maryland, Iowa. They gave it 14 to Iowa. And Indiana. That's good for the 98th ranked strength of schedule so far. We basically have one data point, and that's Maryland. They gave up over 400 yards and 27 points to that team. Yeah, I'm sitting here looking at Michigan. I'm with you, Parker. I don't think Michigan's really played anybody. I'm not, but I'm not all that really imp- impressed with Penn State either. I'm not in love with either one of these teams. Uh, but momentum is a big deal in college. 
Uh, a lot of the college players play on a lot more emotion than they do in NFL whenever where they have to be a lot more cerebral. I think the default here is you go with the stats and you go with the home team. I'm going with Michigan. Michigan to cover? Yes. I wrote down that uh, Sean Clifford and Penn State, they're 2-1 and one against Michigan. The offensive line for Penn State is not very good. The Michigan offensive line is very good, but this is going to be a battle of good on good, Parker. We got Michigan's O-line versus Penn State's defensive line. A nice little defensive treat. I'm going to go Michigan wins but does not cover. Give me Penn State plus seven. Okay. I'm I'm with you on that. I just don't think that Michigan's played anybody. So if my <laughs> handicap is as simple as this. Give me the points about two with two teams. I don't know really much about both of them because I just don't know. So I'll take Penn State with the seven. Um, make me a believer if Michigan rolls in this game. All right. ACC time. We've identified Clemson minus three and a half on the road at Florida State. Which Florida t- State team is going to show up, man? It's it's the marquee is going to say DJ versus Travis. But what do we think? Man, you know, I, I don't know. You know, everybody was I, even us. I didn't I didn't really know what to expect from Florida State this year. They've come out with some pretty good emotion here. They've they've uh, pulled some games off that maybe they weren't supposed to win. Uh, notably, it was LSU, right? Yeah, it was LSU uh, to start the year off. So, I mean, I am. I'm still not convinced on Clemson. I know that the media is saying Clemson's not getting any respect. I get that. But I'm just, I'm just I'm not in love with, again I'm not in love with either one of these teams. But I like uh, I like uh, FSU to I mean because this line I don't know if y'all saw it it moved from three and a half to five. Five's too much for me. I'm going FSU and the points. Bradley mentioned DJ. It's going to be the headline of this. Well, let me tell you something about DJ. From a clean pocket, he completes seventy two percent of his passes. He has 12 touchdowns and zero turnover worthy plays in that that scenario. Under pressure, he completes 35% of his passes. Oh, yuck. With three turnover worthy plays. For Florida State, Lyman Verse and Deloach have a combined 24 quarterback hits. Deloach is beating his blocker 35% of the time. Oh. It, does anyone want to guess who has the 60, 60th rated offensive line? Because it's Clemson. And if DJ is under pressure. Florida State wins this game. Florida State should have beat NC State, but Jordan Travis had two terrible in, uh, interceptions. Clemson has a 78th toughest schedule so far. Florida State, the 28th. This line is creeping. It was creeping down. Now I'll jump back up out, out of nowhere, but 19% of the bets are on Florida State, but they are seeing 51% of the money. Give me Florida State, and I don't even care how many points. <laughs> I've got it seems that Clemson is figuring out some things 200 yard passing games nice running game behind Shipley they're holding on to the ball not turning it over at the moment this game may look close at the beginning so if you want some Florida State juice do like a first half thing but I think the talent is too much here it could be a depth thing honestly I think this ends up Clemson 28-17 and they cover the spread. All right. That this if that happens, this will make this is the game. If Clemson doesn't think they're getting respect, if they go out there and whip down whip up this team that they don't match up well against, then they'll get the respect. I don't think it's gonna be a beatdown. I think it's gonna be maybe even a Florida State first half money line if you want to do that. But I think in the end, after a full four quarters, I think we look up and see Clemson. With Absolutely. A, with a two score win. B1G fans, ACC fans down in the comments, tell us what you think about Penn State versus Michigan and Clemson versus FSU. Tell us what you think down there. Best bet time where we can bet anything we want because we said so. And I'm going to start, I'm going to stick with my ACC coastal team with the North Carolina Tar Heels. Gentlemen, it's North Carolina at Duke and it's not a basketball game. North Carolina's 5-1, and 2-0, and oh, the only undefeated team in the Coastal Conference, Coastal Division in the ACC <laughs> Conference. UNC is 63-41-4 all-time against Duke. They've won three in a row every year. 
these two teams, they play for the victory bell. And I predict that the Duke football team, they're going to get their bells rung. <laughs> North Carolina wins 31 to 20. Give me North Carolina. Rolling with it. Man. All right. I'm going with Mississippi, Mississippi State and UK and Kentucky, that is. That's Mayo Boy down there in, in the great state of Kentucky. Right now, Mississippi State's favored by four. That's not even going to be close. They're going to blow them out. This is when Kentucky starts their skid right about now. Give me Mississippi State. They've already started. This is when Parker. they continue their skid. Parker, they, they have fallen. And can they get up? Uh, talk about draft stocks that's dropped. But, guys, I, this, you know, I thought about going to Auburn on this for 15 points because it's too many. Then I thought about this USC-Utah game, but maybe I'll touch on it in a minute. But, you know, y'all know me. I like to get a little weird, and we're going to get really freaking weird on this one. I'm going to back a team that has won two games in their last 17. They beat UConn last year. If y'all know, you, they're maybe the worst team in college football. And they beat Stony Brook earlier this year. I challenge people to even tell me where Stony Brook is. However, UMass is getting 17 points against Buffalo. UMass is 94th defensively in giving up yards per play. That's terrible, right? But Buffalo is 104th on offense. The key is UMass is 49th in rushing, and Buffalo is 103rd against the rush. This is just going to be a slow running game. It's too many points. It's just too many points. Buffalo is going to win this by like 10 to 14. Give me UMass plus 17. Plus 17. What do I know about UMass? That Marcus can be basketball. <laughs> that, actually, I think that is true. <laughs> Gotta look this up. Hmm. All right, now where are we going? We're going underdogs. We have to identify a team that is not supposed to win, that will win outright. Do you two want to pull the double dip and go UT right here? I mean, that's too easy, right? Oh, that's too easy. Let's get a let's get a little bit of a variety of a variety here. I'm gonna start us off. I'm gonna I'm looking at uh, Oklahoma State and the Cowpokes versus the Horn Frogs of TCU. Uh oh, TCU. That's Parker. Parker took me out with that team last week. They're minus three and a half for TCU. I think the Pokes are going to get it done this weekend. Straight against up. TCU. Straight up. I'm mm. just going to hate on everyone's the picks. Uh, t- uh, Oklahoma State has like the 110th rate defense. TCU is going to rain fire from the heavens passing this. <laughs> Fantastic. It would Maybe. not surprise me. Everybody's seen my records. Golly. I, man, this was a tough one, the underdog one, because we actually touched on the ones I really like. I really like LSU. I really like FSU. And I even might like Penn State. I thought about doing something really weird. You know, I'm just going to do something really weird. I'm going to go ahead and make this official. This is way off. But Coastal Carolina, they're getting top 25 votes. They are undefeated. And they are playing against a 2-3 and three Old Dominion team, and they are favorites by 14 points. Old Dominion can score on this team. I'm taking Old Dominion to straight up beat an undefeated Coastal Carolina team. Old Dom. Well, I'm I'm taking the stinky bait right here with this pick, <laughs> Parker. I'm picking on a Utah team that got beat <laughs> by Florida. I'm picking on a Utah team that UCLA exposed their passing defense. I think UC, USC can duplicate this. The problem, it's on the road. It's going to be a little tricky. I'm taking USC to win outright 27 24. All so, right. he's well, up. well, no, I've got, I got to just happen to pick the, the, I'm sitting here, I had notes on best bets, and this was my number two, and I didn't take it. When we were getting on, I heard him say USC Utah, so I steered away, and I just want to give you my quick thought on this, and mm-hmm. I could be totally wrong, but I'm going to go with regression, as always, right? <laughs> USC has had one interception. If USC throws it, cart. Clark Phillips, he will pick it off. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the country. USC has six fumbles. You know how many they've lost? Zero. They're bound to lose some. We hear so much about that offense. USC had 500 yards in the first three games. They hadn't hit 300 in the last three. If Utah didn't lose to UCLA last week, this number would be massive. In the summer, this was a 12-point line for Utah. This is Utah Super Bowl. I think they win. I think they win. I think they cover. But who? I completely could be wrong. <laughs> Guys, down in the comments, go ahead and tell us what you think about our best bets and our underdogs for college. God, the games are so good this week. Time. It's about time. But it is time to transition to our NFL picks. We 
We don't quite have six this week, so we'll start with the Titans. They're on the bye this week. Uh, we've already discussed our AFC preview show. Seems a little early, a lot early for a bye. Um, yeah. Parker, any news coming out of the uh, Titans world that we can just put out there in their place since there's no game to talk about here? You know, I've kind of stayed away a lot of it this, this week, taking a break from it, but nothing earth-shattering. Just trying to get healthy. Um, hopefully putting in some new offensive plays uh, so they can do something, you know, so they haven't scored in the fourth quarter all year. Um, but, man, there's some questions I have about the Titans. There are two offensive linemen that are sitting out there that are decent players that are on the free agent market. I don't know why they don't go get them, but that's for another pod. Yeah, maybe we'll get into that. But, yeah, they could – I mean, we need to get healthy for sure, and we got to regroup. we got to rethink some things. As early as it is for a buy in the NFL, the Titans needed it. Titans enjoy being atop the AFC South during your bye week because the first game we're going to talk about is for second place in the AFC South. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going on the road. They're at Indianapolis, the home team. This spread is falling, and so something smells fishy here, Parker. We're going to go with Indy minus two, but... <laughs> Let's not forget the Jacksonville Jaguars of all teams shut out the Indianapolis Colts 24 to zero in week two payback or do the Jags own the Colts? Well, yeah, they did shut them out, but we talked about this in that game. Indy didn't have a receiver in that game. Their leading receiver was Ashton Doolin. Like Michael Pittman's back. Alec Pierce is back. This is going to be a different team offensively. Uh, uh, Shaq, Shaq Leonard's out, Darius Leonard, whatever, I forget which way he likes to be called. But, Shaq. Um, yeah, I mean, so far they do. If you go look at PFF grades, um, and just not, not to pick on Trevor, but if you look at his numbers, how low they are against the league, but if you go look at him and just single it out to Indy, he's, 70, he's got a 75 PFF grade against Indy, which is like 20 points higher than the rest of the league. So right now, Jags own, own Indy. Yeah, it's tough because neither one of these teams really showed us anything. But head-to-head, -head, I mean, there was no question earlier in the year. I mean, the Jags mud-stomped them. Uh, I just um, – I have to believe that Trevor won't repeat the performance that he had in his last game against Indianapolis. I don't see Ryan uh, uh, Matt Ryan getting any better. Uh, Trevor might be able to get better. He has some tools that maybe he can uh, use to his advantage with his legs and things like that. Matt Ryan, I still think he is a liability to be even be on the field. I'm going Jags. I think they yeah. might win outright. If you, if you look at it right now, you're talking about Matt Ryan. Trevor Lawrence right now is tied for fourth in turnover-worthy plays with eight. Matt Ryan is heads and shoulders number one on that list <laughs> with 12. The guy is like, he gets sacked and he just, why? I mean, just, yeah. he's, it's unbelievable. They've had five starting quarterbacks in the last five years. I love it. Couldn't happen to a better team. They are the worst offense in the league right now. The Colts are the worst offense in the league. They should be winless. They are averaging 13.8 points per game. At home, it's better. They're averaging 18, but on the road, the Jags, are averaging 27. I have no reason to trust the Blue Ponies. I have no reason to why they should be favored. Give me the Jags. They should just win this game. I think it has to be a get-right game. Um, I trust the coaching staff, finally, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They have an adult in the room. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Colts will have Pittman this game, but uh, I'm not really worried about it because their offensive line is one of the worst. They may not have enough time to get the ball down the field to Pittman because uh, you know Matt Ryan's going to be a statue and just stand there. I just want my rookie, please, if you hear the whistle, don't keep going after the quarterback and throwing body slamming <laughs> to the ground. We don't need any penalties on third and 30. Play with a little discipline here, man. Um, I think someone mentioned on our last pod because they had already played Thursday night football against Denver. I think until last night, maybe the commanders overtook this number, but they're allowing 21 sacks. 
And five of those sacks were against Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville gets another six sacks this week. And they're going to win 20 to six. That's my key number in this game. I'm not even joking when I say this. Matt Ryan has been so bad. If they lose this game, if that score is right, Nick Foles needs to be the starting quarterback next week. He might be worse. I, I don't. He can't. Can he? Can he? No, I don't. I don't think anybody <sighs> can be worse. It's bad. What about the young guy? At least he can move a little bit. What was it? As long Edinger, as he doesn't fumble the Elder, ball. I think Elder, he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, golly, what do you got to lose at this point? I don't, keep doing it wrong, Colts. Keep yeah. doing it wrong. Uh, we're going to go to CBS, the Romo Nance game, Buffalo at Kansas City. Buffalo is the road favorite. We're going to go with minus two and a half matchup of four and one teams. Who can't forget the playoff game? I know Buffalo can't. They don't want to. I mean, they look, can't forget that. Game. Arguably the best game that's ever been played according to some folks um rightfully so i mean one of the most exciting that i've ever seen for sure i don't think this one will disappoint either i think this is going to be a lot of haymakers being thrown uh but in the end i think that josh allen and company are just too much in the end for kc and i think they just end up with the ball last and they end up winning i don't have anything on this game because it's just going to be it's just so incredible. I mean, there's so many things you could go with this with offense and with defense with, with Buffalo has looked unbelievable. Mahomes, an underdog at home. I, I don't think that's ever happened. Never. It's, it's zero. This is the first time. So I've got I mean, a on Mahomes as an underdog though. M- Mahomes it? has been an underdog eight times, only eight in his career. He is seven, zero and one in those games but he's never been an underdog at home. This is it. It's the first time. This is it. And, and hey, you know, I know Tyreek's not there, but this Buffalo secondary is decimated. And the key to this game is going to be the defensive line for Buffalo. They've got the one of the two best defensive lines in the league right now. They can get pressure with four guys, keep everyone back. That's how you beat them at homes. But I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, my handicap on this game is really simple. It's Mahomes at home as an underdog. I am not. I am not going against that. I'm just not doing it. I I don't care how how good Buffalo's look. I I really don't. Give me Mahomes as an underdog at home with Andy Reid. It it just, yeah, crazy. 13 seconds. 13 seconds has been burning in the minds of Buffalo Bills players, administration, coaches, fans. Can't let that happen. Can't let it happen again. They've got 13 seconds written on the walls in their locker room. They are not going to let this go, man. They the, Buffalo is out for blood. Yeah, I, I, and I'm going with. It. I'm gonna. I'm gonna side with. I'm scared though, Parker. I'm scared to death of not backing, not only a good quarterback but a great quarterback getting points mm-hmm. at home. Yeah, that's asinine to me. I'm just, I'm going with the revenge factor. I'm going Buffalo 29, 24. You got, in my opinion, like just, I see these lists that come out now. They're talking about what's the best quarterback, man. It ain't Josh Allen. Like it's, it's Patrick Mahomes. Like no one can throw the passes that Mahomes can throw. I know Allen can run. I know he can throw the bomb, but I'm just trusting in, in Mahomes. Like, and I actually think this might be a game that they can run, run in, to be honest with you, but it's going to be, I hope it's a good game. And I'm so happy that they put it that afternoon slot instead of yeah. having to wait till Sunday night. Yeah. Give me, give me a game that's worth watching the afternoon. So that's only, right. give me, only give me three. Yep. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be a good time. Good time. But we are going to go to the Sunday night game. This will no hit home to Mr. Milton. We've got Dallas at the Philadelphia Eagles. This line is floating. Seems like we're going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles minus six and a half. Blake, no Dak again. Do we trust Cooper Rush? Do we have a reason to not tr- trust Cooper Rush at this point? That's my He only just went thing. to LA. I mean, I, I'm 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 good with Cooper Rush right here, but either way, I'm looking at the at the Dallas defense. I think they'll be able to, you know, put Jalen Hurts to a test that maybe he hasn't had quite yet this year. I think he's gonna they're gonna put some pressure on him, maybe make him make some some throws on the run. Um, 
it's going to be an interesting matchup. Either I don't know if Dallas will win, but they're definitely going to cover. Or excuse me, I'm going to take in Dallas in the points, rather. Six and a half, plus six and a half. I can't right. talk right tonight, guys. He's excited. He's excited about UT. Oh, gosh. Um, I jumped <laughs> off the Cooper Rush train one game too early. In fact, I, it wasn't even the Cooper Rush train. It was the Dallas train. Cooper Rush threw for 100 yards last week. He did not win that game. Dallas in the last four games have played the Rams, the Commies, the Giants, and the Bengals. All, all wins. All wins, right? Do you know what they have in common? They're the 32nd worst offensive line, 31st, 30th, and 29th. Da- da- Dallas might have the best offensive line in football. I would argue that they probably do with Micah Parsons. But you know what? Philly has the best offensive line in football, and they're getting their left tackle back for this game. So Cooper Rush in those four games threw for an average 193 yards. He didn't have to do anything. Yeah, I know he hasn't turned the ball over. He's had five turnover-worthy plays. Two of them were dropped interceptions. And he had three more that were negated by penalties. He's going to have to do something this game. I think Philly rolls, and the Dak controversy is over. <laughs> oh, surely there wasn't <laughs> one, right? <laughs> no, there it, man. There are crazy people out there on social media. Well, nine-time Pro Bowl tackle Jason Peters going back to Philly. He says, "I quote: I just know the Philly fans are beep idiots when it comes to playing the Cowboys or any other team. Really, they start throwing stuff at teams. I mean, they nasty." The Cowboys are ranked 27th in passing in the NFL. I think they're going to be playing from behind, which spells bad news for Dallas. Going Philly 23-13. Covers the spread. All right, guys. Tell us what you think about our picks there. Best tell, bet t- 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 tell us what you think uh, uh, I'm going to end up at. Right now, my record is struggling. <laughs> Best bet. We can pick props. Parker has thrown out some props the last couple of weeks. We can pick games, underdogs, whatever, whatever you want, man. Um, I'm going down to the Superdome where the last time Joe Burrow and Chase were actually there. They won a national title. Joe Burrow was smoking cigars, had the ladies on his arms, and I think it's going to be a repeat. I think Cincinnati's going down to NOLA. I don't care if Taysom Hill wants to act like a running back. <laughs> I'm going 24-13 Cincinnati. It is a fast track. It could happen. I like when we go against each other. But more of that on a little bit. I want to go back to the last game, which Philly and uh, Dallas. And Zeke Elliott. Right now, his over-under on rushing attempts is 15 and a half. He hasn't had that number. He hasn't hit 15 in four weeks. I expect them to be in a negative game script. And the pass catching back, Pollard will be getting more work because they'll be from behind. So just give me the under. I hate doing the unders because it sucks to to root against people. But 15 and a half is just, it's not happening. It's just not going to happen. Under 15 and a half attempts. All right. There you go. Prop bets. What is your best bet? What did you like? Sorry, I'm writing this down for our <laughs> pick six. Uh, I, gotta, I usually got to go back and rewatch to remember. Yeah, this. no, golly. No, I, I've, mine's pretty plain and simple. I think Baltimore's due for a good mud stomping. They're going to oh. be going. They're going to be going to the Giants. I think this is this five and a half number is. I don't think it'll be a, a, any problem for them this weekend. Baltimore over New, uh, New York, five and a half. Saquon is apparently healthy. After the little shoulder scare, and uh, by God, he saved my fantasy week by coming back and catching that 41-yard touchdown. Jeez. Well, they're uh, also the Giants, to think about it, their defensive coordinators, Wink Martindale, who's been the defensive, coor- been yeah. defensive coordinator for a year for the Ravens. So you would think that you know uh, maybe uh, Lamar Jackson seen a thing or two and knows what's coming. And finally... Our underdog segment. We got to pick a team that's not supposed to win that will win straight up. Anyone yep. going to double dip this week in the NFL? I no. will, go, go ahead there. Parker. I am not going to double dip, but I am going to challenge you directly. I am going to head down to Nolens myself and give me the <laughs> Saints with whoever is under center. I don't care if it's Taysom Hill. I don't care if it's in book. I don't care who it is to beat this garbage Zach Taylor team. 
New Orleans is at home for the second straight week. Cincinnati is traveling on a short week. The key to beating Burrow is getting pressure without blitzing. And you know who blitzes less than anybody in the league? The Saints. Wrong team favored. Give me the Saints. Parker just smoked your ass. I'm yeah. probably wrong. Though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. I can uh, sound I, good, but it'll be better. My, for my dog, I'm look, I'm going to uh, to Cleveland, seeing uh, New England headed to Cleveland. No, not the Brownies. Don't yep. pick on the uh, Brownies. Forget about it. Screw Cleveland. Forget about it. We got some more stuff we got to talk about on another date about uh, some stuff going on in Cleveland as well. But I've got New England going in there and upsetting Cleveland. I'm um, looking at another. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Have, just my Cleveland brown, attire. We have Brownie the Elf right here on our podcast. Brownie, how are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Just uh, got my normal attire on. You know, in fact, I've heard I'm going to have to start double bagging it after the latest news. So, so tell us more about the uh, massage parlors up there. Oh, you know, it's not illegal whatsoever. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't forced. It was just you know highly recommended. So I, I I think it's he's fine he's fine he's fine they 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 settled him okay okay keep push pushing the merch we we like the new logos up there <laughs> but uh, don't like the Browns chances yeah, as the season continues <laughs> props to present though man Wait, yeah yeah I'm looking at another road I mean another home underdog this week I think the Vikings are a little full of themselves oh lord. The Minnesota Vikings are going on the road. They think they're good right now. I believe that the Dolphins are going to rally behind the rookie quarterback, Skylar Thompson. And the Vikings are going to get caught sleeping this week. Give me the fish 30 to 13. I don't even think it'll be close. Wow. wow. Love this pick. Kirk Cousins is bad away from home. Uh, traveling to Miami in September and October is usually a tough place to play. You got some humidity and when everybody's talking, Skylar Thompson, Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater is practicing. If he clears concussion protocol, he's going to be good to go. I just even better. Whatever. Yeah. Right. No, no. I mean that because, but I'm with you. Skylar looked great in the preseason. I think it's a, I, I, just, I really like this call. All right. All right. All right, guys. Go down in the comments. Tell us what you think about our NFL picks overall. Tell us what you think about our best bets and our underdogs. Tell us how big of an idiot you think we are. But we really appreciate you joining us tonight on this Friday night for a great weekend of football on Saturday and Sunday. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Follow us on all of our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at DDS Sports Talk. And you you can also download the audio versions of all these podcasts on your favorite podcasting platform. Gentlemen, Final thoughts. Balls. Defend the 16. Take it home for Rocky Top, baby. Let's go! He just can't help himself. Sean McVay says the team and Cam Akers are working through some things right now. And he'll no longer play. And there is a rumor that he is going to be no longer a part of the LA Rams. What the hell happened? We have, we'll have more news on this later. Absolutely. We got a lot of stuff we might talk about next week on a midweek pod. Once we get some more information, but my, my final thought here is this ugly, horrible Deshaun Watson situation is not going away. Indefinite suspension for the entire year and no more playing until we say so was the correct call. Number 26 is step forward. Congratulations to her for being brave enough to do so. But we won't spoil it for you. They will save that for a midweek pod next week. But as always, it's two-tone blue all the way. But on this occasion, go Big Orange. 